Welcome to those forking fangirls where we talk all things nerdy book, TV, movie, pop culture, fandoms, and how they integrate into our adult lives. I'm Natasha. And I'm Christine. And today, this is episode 11, we are discussing and talking about our first fandoms. Yeah, and not like our first official fandoms, like the first things we were obsessed with as humans, like the very early years, like the things you were obsessed with when you were six, seven, eight, that kind of formed the foundation of what we obsess over today and how we get excited about things. So it's going to be a fun, nostalgic, throwbacky discussion and we're gonna like trace those obsessions to like what we like today (laughs) everything starts from childhood it really does (laughs) um but before we do that we've got some snap crackle pop culture news (laughs) all right christine Take it away. You've got All a right. lot. I well, I we I had nothing, so I was like, we well, need to put some things in here. I stopped and gasped when I, you know how Britney Spears posts these little videos all the time. She posted a video in a Coca Cola outfit, and I was like, what is the statement that's happening here? Because if you don't know, Britney Spears was iconically the Pepsi, Pepsi. girl in the t- early 2000s my favorite commercial is you're in the pepsi generation where britney spears takes us through the years of pepsi mm-hmm. and does all these dances according to the decade it's so cute and it aired at the super bowl and it was amazing and she also has this pepsi music video that's like my heart dunna, dunna. and it's so good <laughs> like these are my favorite commercials of all time <laughs> My childhood was defined by these two commercials. It's the one where she's like a um she's wearing a flight like, attendant. No, 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 no. She's wearing like a jumpsuit, like she, like she's in a factory or something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And she comes out of like a Pepsi truck, and they do this great dance, and it's like ba 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 ba. Anyway, both iconic. We'll link. I'll get some links and put them in the description because I feel like probably a lot of people haven't seen them because they aired in like two thousand one and two thousand two. Yeah, it's, but it's a little hard for me to picture. Anyway, oh my gosh. Well, I studied them because I did a video called Britney Spears The Evolution in 2011 where I, <laughs> yes, I did I a whole thing. Anyway, so I'll link all of that in the description so you can get the joy of Pepsi commercials with Britney Spears. <laughs> I feel like those are like the highlights of her career. And she's wearing a Coca-Cola outfit. That's my point. I don't know what she was trying to say. Like, what did Pepsi do to you, Britney? <laughs> Or is your contract just finally up and you can wear a Coca-Cola outfit? <laughs> it's probably been up for a while. Expressing your freedom. Um, all right. And then my next news is actual news that I'm so excited about. So yes. Adam Silvera's book, They Both Die at the End, which used to be not as not as widespread, but now I think everyone knows it. If you mm-hmm. haven't, it's like the number one book on book talk, I feel like. <laughs> and mm-hmm. before that, it was really big on book two, but it was our book of the month, the month that came out for Book Explosion. So I, I have been excited about it for a very long time. And Adam just announced that Netflix has picked it up. And Yay. I know that it's like already written and everything. So they're hopefully going to go into production really soon. <laughs> The um okay the really cool thing about this is that the um the the showrunner of Bridgerton who stepped down yes. after the first season is is bringing this to Life. Netflix yes and I am so excited for Adam by like one little thing is like he it, like I think they were working on it usually what happens is like you work on this for a long time and then you announce it and so they were working on it like you know when Bridgerton was coming out season two and I was doing like all my Bridgerton things and he's like I showed him like your outfits and I'm like oh thanks Adam oh, just get me on Bridgerton do sir <laughs> Oh my god. Adam's the coolest. If you haven't read his books, they're so good. They definitely are sadder on the sadder end, but they're so, so fucking good. Oh, and also, he has non-sad ones called What If It's Us, and what is the first one called? Um, Happy, happy something. It's not anything with happy. Um, I thought it was. 
No, it's with Becky Albertalli. Hold on. Oh, what if it's well. Us? No. Oh, okay. Here's to us. Okay, the first one's called Here's What If It's Us. And the second one's called Here's to Us. And he co writes them with Becky Albertalli. And one does one narrator and the other does the other narrator. And they're so adorable and sweet and have happy endings. And it's great. <laughs> they don't both die at the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so our next bit of news is also like in the YA realm Mm -hmm. uh unfortunately i'm very sad vampire academy was canceled on uh peacock Peacock. they had one season and then that's it which it's so unfortunate because i just feel like i feel like people people just didn't give it a chance and they as soon as you know it it went off of you know the normal book or like what the you know, it went off the, of, the book trajectory. Yeah. People were just like, this is dumb. I don't want anything to do with this show. And I just, I'm like, how do, how else do you have to fill a show? You yeah. know? Well, again, you have to trust that the show will bring it back around to whatever you're hoping that will be included that might look mm-hmm. like it won't be. But we know that the two showrunners are huge fans of the books and they really respect everything that happens in there. So it's it's upsetting. And it was really sad because we, we got to know all of the cast because we hosted the launch event. Um, and it was so sad seeing everyone sad on Instagram. I know. <laughs> well, they all like they all loved each other so much. Yeah. Like they were all such good friends. I mean, we got to see that firsthand and mm-hmm. they all they all love the source material too cuz they've all read it and it's just I think it was in really good hands yeah. and I'm just sad again like another one of our like beloved YA series just isn't getting its time to shine. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's unfortunate because it's Vampire Academy. We already tried to give it a shine, and the movie didn't didn't do it for us, and the show just got canceled. It's it's almost like it's timing with this too. I feel like it, we're not what in the mean? vamp. The vampires are coming back into the realm, but maybe people weren't ready for a show like this, or maybe it just didn't get the marketing it needed to hit a widespread audience because it's called vampire academy i also i know they had to do that because that way everyone knows it's the vampire academy books but at the same time i feel like that title has always made me feel like i don't like without knowing what was in it i wouldn't have touched it you know Mm -hmm. i mean also it's on it was on peacock and it's like you had Mm -hmm. to stream it you had to purchase peacock to watch Mm -hmm. like you could watch the first i think two episodes for free but it's still not a lot of people have Peacock, <laughs> so and now you're asking Peacock's like Peacock's got a lot of good stuff though. So. They do, but I like Peacock. Mm-hmm. It's not like HBO or Netflix that most people have. Yeah, but people have it. It, it just I don't think it got. Um, I don't know. I don't think people gave it enough of a chance who were fans, and I don't think the title did it any favors in getting new fans Mm -hmm. like i know the vampire diaries was called the vampire diaries but it was that came out right in the twilight era so yeah it was primed to find the audience that it needed to find now we're kind of past that and like everyone's a little older so it's harder to and it's on the cw it was on the cw where like that's what you expect that's where we go for it too Mm -hmm. for those teen dramas Mm-hmm. Like I think I would have I've loved to see Vampire Academy on Hulu or something like that or Netflix where, you know, that's where I go to to watch my daily shows, daily shows or like my teen dramas that I can, you know, f- just forget. Yeah, about Peacock's life. so new, so it's hard to um, get everyone over there that needs to be there to make it succeed. Yeah. So sad times. But let's move on (laughs) to, oh, we have a big announcement about Uh, our Patreon this week. So we're changing things up because we've taken the break to kind of rethink our Patreon structure. And we're moving Fangirl Tea Time to the $5 tier. So it's more accessible and more affordable 
to Mm -hmm. everyone and anyone who wants to support the show that way and join us for fangirl tea time every week and get the extra long show without ads so if you haven't yet or if you if you and you want to support this show that is now available the link is in our show notes you can pledge at the five dollar level and get fangirl tea time which is our half an hour extra show where we get into more personal things it's really fun and we'd love to have you join our community there and for all of you on the ten dollar tier of course if that's not affordable for you you can like move down to the five dollar tier but if you want to stay in the ten dollar tier we have new perks there yes we're going to be doing an extra bonus show once a month about either something that we binged on one of these platforms or uh, like some big news that came in about some pop culture stuff that we want to dig into extensively or, or a Q&A. Um, or a Q&A, AMA. Yeah, so we're going to be mixing it up every month, but once a month there will be that extra show that is available to the team Edward and above. And we're going to make our movie commentaries a thing that is for team Edward and above. So you guys will get access to to any and all movie commentaries that we do. The next one we're planning is New Moon or Teen Wolf. Yeah, the Teen, Teen Wolf, Wolf movie is coming. <laughs> and we think that'll be really fun to watch together uh, because I don't think I'll watch it by myself, but like to fun watch it together and then share that with y'all. I think that's going to be a hoot. <laughs> um, and then, of course, we have our top tier our team polis bananas where the perks are you know you could be a guest on the show so you you sign up to to you sign up for that with the be our guest form that you get access to on the team polis bananas 15 dollar tier and on that tier you also get to do the fangirl bonding sessions where we do our zoom hangs and we are now like going to solidify a time of every month so we're planning on doing this on the last saturday of every month so you'll know the day that we're planning it and then we will do a little poll for timing wise what works yeah. best for the most amount of people um so that's coming up this month in january um what day is that in january? that would be the 28th the 28th all right so yes. we will be planning our fangirl bonding t- bonding session for january 28th and every following last Saturday of the month unless there is a outstanding circumstance to which we will let you know ahead of time yeah yeah that we've we're trying to get our scheduling down so we're also you know when you when you subscribe to any level you get access to the live show here and we haven't like exactly nailed down when we're going to record every week because our schedules have been so sporadic but we are now shooting for every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time so that you know when it's going to happen. Yes. Um, but of A course, little insight. <laughs> yes. But of course, there is always like the chance that something might come up and we might have to change the show. But we're really, really going to start buckling down to yeah. try to keep our sketch. Yeah. Um, and of course, like if Patreon is not your thing. We totally understand. And Mm -hmm. any support and all support just means the world to us. You can always support by rating and reviewing us on any of the podcast apps that you listen on, um, telling a friend, family, um, sharing on social media. Um, Make sure to follow us, too, on Instagram, which is those forking fangirls. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, I know lots of you guys like to watch us there. And that's those forking fangirls. We're getting really close to it thousand subscribers Yay! so keep that in mind <laughs> keep that in mind <laughs> it's a big milestone for yeah. youtube channel so we're like excited to hit that hopefully soon and oh and just the easiest and most helpful thing is to make sure that you are following us for free on your favorite podcast app so yeah. that the show gets to you every week and you get notified know, yeah you get notified and that's that's the way you don't forget so Thank you so much for any and all support, like on any platform and any form. We're very, very grateful. And let's move on to our next segment. <laughs> <laughs> what right now? What right now? <laughs> all right, Natasha, what are you reading right now? Um, I finished Chain of Thorns and I started Chain of Iron. Um, uh, 
Christine and I just did this dramatic reading of Chain. Wait. Wait. I finished Chain of Gold. I'm on Chain of Thorns. And then Chain of Iron is coming out. Uh, Christine, you're muted. You're saying it all wrong. Hold on. I am? <laughs> yes. I was like, no, no, no. And that was not coming through because I was on mute. Okay. So you finished Chain of Gold. You're reading Chain of Iron. And Chain of Thorns is coming out oh. January 31st. And we did. We were given a scene from Simon Teen to do a dramatic reenactment reading of. And we did that. It's on our Instagrams and our TikToks if you want to check it out. It was so fun. <laughs> it's very fun. It was like the good old like booktube days. Um, <laughs> I really want to go back and rewatch our Shadow Hunter videos from um, 2016 booktube. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, my favorite is still the we did a shadow hunters parody on my channel back in 2016 at sasha's house and mm -hmm. i played jace and sasha was clary and if you watch the shadow hunters show <laughs> <laughs> it like it was a parody of basically the show and it was so much fun <laughs> natasha played izzy <laughs> i did <laughs> um yeah jesse was alec and he played simon <laughs> Jesse the reader we're talking about. It was a fun time. Uh, and there's cameos with Zoe Hurt and Kat of Catatastic. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we got on this. <laughs> okay. But so you're in Chain of Iron. Are you close to the end? Where are you? No. no. Um, okay. I'm, I'm at the beginning still. All right. All right. But, yeah. We're glad you're in it at all. We're excited. Yes. <laughs> excited to have you here in the Shadow Under fandom. <laughs> uh, Again. Again, yeah, yeah. It's been a bit. It's been a bit. Mm -hmm. So what have you been reading? I am reading, I'm rereading Ninth House. And it's, I know I was rereading this last week, but now I'm two hours from the end. I'm I'm in the end. And it is so fucking good. And I'm so excited to get to Hellbent. And I'm excited to make uh, a little real TikTok about my experience rereading it. And I've been taking notes this time. And just gasping all the time because, you know, <laughs> I forgot fucking everything. <laughs> I don't remember any of that book. I, I need to reread it. Too. I know. I've been like telling Natasha things that happened. She's like, oh my God. I, I forgot don't remember. About I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just so, I, I haven't had this experience in so long where I get to, you're doing it right now, where I get to jump right into the next book because I've read a lot of like first books and then the second book's not out and then I never get to it because of this reason where yeah. we have so many other books and I forgot what happened. Mm -hmm. So like actually rereading this right before going into the next book is making me so excited. This is like why you first get obsessed with reading, I feel like, because you can keep going in the same universe and yes. like really dig in. Oh, I love it. I do, too. That, and that's why I'm having such a good time. And I did the same thing with Jennifer L. Armentrout series, yeah. too. It's just, it's the best. I yes. love it. Yes. Like, while as an adult, I really love a standalone because I don't have to, like, refresh myself. If you actually do get to read something in succession, it is so fucking good that way. <laughs> It's, it's like binging the best show and it just lasts so much longer than a show because it's a book. There's so much more that can happen. Mm -hmm. um, Natasha, what are you watching on TV this week? I'm watching The Last of Us on HBO. This has been a highly anticipated show uh, for lots of people, my brother mainly, um, and myself, because I watched Alex. That was the, the Last of Us is the only video game that I was truly interested in actually watching the gameplay. Um, there's two games. One came out in 2014. Don't quote me. And the second one came out in 2020. Um, so, uh, and it is with the daddy, Pedro Pascal. The daddy. The daddy, the daddy is of the internet. Title? That yes, it is. Cause he's 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 Baby the Yoda's daddy. daddy. He's the daddy. Well, Baby uh, Yoda's the child. No And he's the daddy. The daddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he plays like a father figure in this too. So that's why everyone's like the okay. Daddy. The daddy. Um 
it is uh it's scary it because the game was scary but like this is scary too and it's about it's basically about zombies um yeah but it's a different way zombies are formed and it's uh it's really interesting i don't really want to talk about it because i feel like you should just go watch it like everyone's gonna watch it and it's gonna be the new sunday night hbo show it already is it was trending yeah twitter last night it's Um, it's just good (laughs) Yeah, I want to watch it, and I watched the opening scene, and since I still have PTSD anxiety from pandemic, uh, I immediately got anxious, and I was like, this isn't worth it right now. (laughs) Yeah, because it's, it, like, the, I mean, it all starts from, like, a sickness, kind of, not Mm -hmm. really. Um, But they're talking about a pandemic in the Mm -hmm. opening scene, like, in the 60s or the 50s, or I think the 60s, or 70s on the TV. Um, It's, Yeah. There's like an epidemiologist there, mm-hmm. and so it's a little triggering because we're we're just you know yeah. getting out of that. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember my my question was to Alex. I'm like, why isn't anyone wearing PPE? Why aren't they wearing masks? Why aren't they wearing gloves? And he's like, that's not how they get infected, or they changed it. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me coming out of a post pandemic world. <laughs> um. So this week. That 90s show dropped on Netflix. And I don't know if you watched that 70s show. But I didn't. I, oh, I loved that 70s show growing up. It was so funny. I loved all of the characters. I had them all on DVD. It was such a comfort show that, like, we would all watch together, like my mom and Olivia and me and Paul. Uh, so the fact that that 90s show was coming out didn't originally excite me and then paul was like no 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 no! they're all in it they're all gonna be like coming in and out of the show i was like no they're not and he's like yeah and we watched the trailer and i teared up just watching the trailer because um you know eric and donna were there and jackie and kelso and just seeing these characters back on screen and knowing they're all gonna like be a little bit of a part of it because Ren, Red, Red, and um, oh my gosh, what is the wife's name? The 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 mom and dad from the original show are like yeah. the centerpieces of the new show, mm-hmm. but uh, their their granddaughter, who is Donna and Eric's daughter, comes to stay with them for the summer, and um, in the first episode, I. Eric looks exactly the fucking same. He's the, what's his name in real life? Um, the guy who's in Spider-Man. Do you know his name? He plays. The guy who's in spider Oh, He's Topher in Grace? Spider-Man 3. Topher Grace. Okay. So Topher Grace plays Eric Foreman. He looks exactly, the- I couldn't get over the fact that he's like 20 years older and like he looks exactly the same. <laughs> He's got that, like, young face. He does. He looks like a baby all the time. And it, it made me want to rewatch the original series. Uh, and, like, he left the show before the last season, so I stopped watching, the, and I never saw the last season. So it was really cool to see him back in that world. And to see Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis walk in there, I immediately started I did, crying again. I, I saw that scene on TikTok, and I was like, <laughs> ah! Oh my god. She's like, Michael! <laughs> it's just so cute, too, because they're married now. Yes, and she was a youth when they started, so, like, it kind of was weird, and they didn't actually, you know, look at each other, like, Yeah, he was Ashley Kutcher. That was, that was her first kiss. Yeah. Yeah, well, she, she was, was so young. 13 when she auditioned, and she illegally auditioned for because she was supposed to be older to be in that role, and she didn't tell them how old she was. That sounds like another story, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's I'm I'm think I'm gonna watch the show because it'll probably be like a comfort easy show, but you know it is like a bunch of new characters, so I'd have to like let myself you know go along with that (laughs) um but yeah what movies did you watch this week (laughs) christine and i both watched shotgun wedding yes (laughs) we went to the premiere it was so cute so funny um jennifer coolidge is in it and she is so so fun she's a scene movie. stealer really literally every scene she every time she speaks it's just like this is all about jennifer coolidge <laughs> and then j-lo and, Do- and josh dumel are the two leads and j-lo 
is amazing and i still like she baffles me with her beauty i'm just like i, I would know not, i would not know how old she was if i didn't know how old she was like i don't she's ageless she's timeless <laughs> she's timeless also like yeah she just looked really hot in this movie she did and so did josh jumal i mean like i've loved josh jumal since when i watched his... with hot todd hamilton yeah that and then i used to watch him in a show called las vegas back in the day Ooh, didn't even and know that show. yeah and um uh, I mean, yeah, when a date with Tad Hamilton was like my ultimate like favorite <laughs> like teen <laughs> drama movie. Watch that because I don't. I know I watched it, but I don't. Topher Grace it is in that. All. He is. Yeah, and Jen- Jennifer Goodwin, and then Kate Bosworth. Um, that's one of my favorite movies of all time. My m- we used to quote this scene from it, and it was like, I oh Topher Grace goes, I don't remember a time before. You started telling that story. <laughs> Wait, why have I heard that line before? Probably because my mom used to say it all the time. <laughs> I mean, I did watch the movie, but I, I was little. We were little when that came out. You were very little. <laughs> yeah, but I've rewatched it like all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, I have to rewatch. But yeah, Shotgun Wedding was so fun. It comes out on Amazon Prime the twenty seventh, so very soon. We saw it, like, very early. <laughs> we did. Usually it's, like, the week it comes out. It came out in theaters before Christmas. Like, oh, as, like, okay. a, as a... No, it didn't, because I said they, they, they said this was the global premiere. Oh. Yeah. Maybe, so. I don't know. I was When I was looking up when it was coming out, I said it, it was, like, coming out in December, so I don't know. Well, it didn't. <laughs> J-Lo hadn't even seen it, she said. We saw J-Lo with Ben Affleck. They were we did. There. They were just 20 feet away, just, like holding hands and they like were canoodling. very yeah very touchy feely with like all these people in the theater like staring at them they all were like with their phones both. like oh my god these like two enormous starlets just like walking <laughs> by casually holding hands it was crazy uh, <laughs> yep 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 uh, we I could not not paparazzi. It was like I can't even I, I can't process that they're right there. Like, I can't. What? They're just very famous. <laughs> they are very famous. Jenny from the Block and Batman. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, um, yeah. So that was what right now. We're gonna move on to our general discussion today. Our first fandoms and like like fan. Fandom is such a weird term to associate with the things that you loved as a child, but like you're, st- oh, but you become so obsessed with a thing. How can you not call yourself part of that fandom at that <laughs> age? Like we, yeah. it, it, you don't need the internet to be part of a fandom. We just consider that now as the be all end all of how you communicate with other people who love a thing but there were communities and there were things that you loved before that existed unless you were born when the internet was big (laughs) that's true (laughs) some people just grew up with the internet (laughs) i mean yeah my my nephews are are just like watching tablets and they love um Oh my gosh, what is that guy on YouTube? I can't even think of him. But like, there's like shows that they're obsessed with and like yeah. people that they're obsessed with. They're part of the fandom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to go through like the, the first things we were ever obsessed with and kind of trace them into our adult lives and how those, did we learn any skills from being part of that fandom that have kind of transferred into what we do today? Natasha, why don't you kick us off with your first fandom? Um, okay. I was heavily obsessed and like, I still have, I I still love all of them. Barbies were (laughs) my thing. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I had the most elaborate setup. Okay. Because one, I talked about this in a previous episode. My mom used to work for Mattel toys who creates Barbies. My great uncle was a CFO of Mattel. So, um, Oh, I had a lot of access to Barbies <laughs> and um, they were, it was like, like our living room in our house was never like a functioning living room. It was always just like a toy place for my brother and I. And so like, that's where Alex and I would 
play together and I had like the big Barbie dream house. My I had so many Barbies. I had I had play Barbies and then I had display Barbies. And then the display Barbies were not to be touched. Nope. And I I would take them out of their boxes too cuz I I don't I didn't oh I had God, no idea. Oh my god, you ruined the Barbies. <laughs> well, I know. I never sold them anyways. Um, I took them out of their box and I would display them on their little stands and they would be in my bookshelves and I would look at them and then if people came over I would be like this is this. I had like a Gucci Barbie. I had, I had, uh, uh, I had a all these Gucci like designer. Harvey, did you yes. even know what Gucci was? I know. Because when really. Spice Girls were like, the little Gucci dress, the little Gucci dress, or the little Gucci dress, <laughs> I had no idea what the fuck they were talking about. <laughs> I knew it was a designer, and I'm like, and the dress she was wearing was cool, and I thought that was interesting. But it was just I thought a black dress. No, no, no. She was wearing my Gucci Barbie had like long blonde hair, like straight platinum blonde hair, and then had this like um, tan like bandeau like top, and then like a long train. Like they these Barbies were fashionable. The ones that I had. I was talking about Posh Spice in the Spice Girls movie. I wasn't even talking about the Barbie. Oh. Oh, oh yes, I knew that. I yeah. know the black dress. Um, no, but uh, the thing the thing about Barbies is that like I wouldn't even I would make like a story with them, and usually it all ended up uh, the root or the goal was to get the Barbies married. Okay. That was my goal in The Sims. Yeah. Oh, The Sims. Oh my gosh. I totally forgot about that. I know, that was a I'm huge obsession. Me too. The Sims. Wait, hold on. Okay. So I, Alex, would play with me, my twin brother, and he had G.I. Joes. Okay. So he also had, my brother had a freaking helicopter for like his G.I. Joes. Well, what else are you going to have? You can't have the dream house. <laughs> That's true. And then, like, he would fly down in the helicopter, and then the G.I. Joe would, like, I w we would take hours setting up this wedding, like, using, like, the furniture and putting, setting all the Barbies, like, down so they were seated in the aisle. And then I would take forever to, like, get her dressed. And I would put on different outfits because I had, I, all I had were, like, yeah, they multiple used to Barbies. Sell separate outfits. Yes. Yeah. It was, it, okay, it was just so, like, the gender divide was so hard back then because the world was just so homophobic. Yes. Like, it was ridiculous. Like, the idea of a boy having a Barbie or a mm -hmm. girl having a G.I. Joe, it's just so sad looking back at it. It's just a doll. I know. Well, even then, like, I think I remember, like, like, like Alex would play and he I used to have Ken dolls and he'd play with them and then my dad was like very insistent on making sure like he had G.I. Joe's. Mm -hmm. So it's just I remember my dad doing the same thing. Like he can't play with a Barbie. <laughs> so dumb. It's so it's dumb. a doll. <laughs> I know. It's so ridiculous. Um, Nicole says that um me and my brother would always play G.I. Joe Barbie too. <laughs> yeah, I did not do that. I once Olivia got into Barbies, I like would play with her, but I never loved Barbies. Olivia you had that giant life-size Barbie that was like the size of maybe like a six-year-old. Yeah, I had one of those too. I didn't like it though. Yeah, well, she took off the clothes because she didn't like it, and then there was just a naked Barbie <laughs> around all the time that was giant. Because like, we didn't have any other clothes for it. I remember trying to put like American Girl doll clothes on. It. Oh my gosh, so stupid. I remember I for like I was definitely very old at this time i think it was like 12 i asked for this big like three-story barbie house and it was like as it was like f almost six feet tall and then wow. we had put it in my room and i just outfitted it with so much different furniture I, it was and i had it until i think i was like 14 years old like that was i was too old okay do you think <laughs> do you think you've like, carried any of this Barbie fandom into your life now? Or did this just, like, kind of fade into the Oh, no, future? no. This is what started my obsession with, like, clothes and hair oh. and makeup. Because, like, I was... Uh, my favorite thing to do was to dress them and, like, to put different <laughs> outfits on them. This all makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So, the first fandom I have down on here is cameras and photography like i was so boring i was 
obsessed with pictures. So like my Nana would always be taking pictures and she had all these photo albums from throughout the years. And I would like love looking through them and I really wanted to take pictures. So I remember for like my fifth, Christmas I got this Fisher Price camera that took actual film in it Mm -hmm. and it was like my pride and joy (laughs) I loved taking pictures on it and then getting them back because you couldn't see what the pictures looked like too so it was always a surprise when you went to get them developed at like CBS or back in the day wherever (laughs) yeah and then I started getting obsessed with like disposable cameras because I was still little so like they would buy me a disposable camera to use and then in 1998 the year before my little brother was born, I got a Polaroid camera. And this Polaroid camera, like, changed my life at the time. I was, like, the official photographer of the family <laughs> from age 8 on. <laughs> that makes sense. I, Alex and I also had Polaroid cameras. I had, like, a Barbie pink one and he had a black one. Oh, my God. I had the classic black Polaroid. And it was my everything. And um, it was such a treat. It only so you get 10 pictures per film. Mm -hmm. And so I remember for Christmas, I got four film reels and I was like, wow, 40 pictures. This is going to last me a year. (laughs) (laughs) But since I was the official photographer, when I ran out, like they would get me a new 10 roll because my dad, I, I will never forget him telling me that my job with this camera is to take a picture of the new baby every day. (laughs) And so I took a picture religiously of Paul every day for like the first, until I ran out of film. (laughs) Um, And then like I was obsessed with photo albums. So I would get photo albums and like put all my pictures in them. And then come high school, I got obsessed with scrapbooking. And of course, I'm still obsessed with all of this today. (laughs) You are. I'm, I was the same though. Like my grandma was a big scrapbooker and I would go over there and like help her scrapbook as well. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm. It's so weird when I look back on these things. Like a lot of them came from my nana. Like that's where I got my reading obsession too. Like she was the coolest. <laughs> um, and I, uh, I got a digital camera for like I think my twelfth birthday. And oh my god, what a game changer! Yes. <laughs> My Casio digital camera came everywhere with me from that point on. (laughs) I feel like I had the same thing. Like, I got a digital camera as well. And then I remember my dad also bought me this, like, printer that I could print the photos on. Oh, my God. I didn't have one of those. (laughs) Yeah. And I remember I went crazy, like, one Christmas. And I have, I still have these photos of, like, all my cousins being weird. (laughs) I would print them like regular paper oh my yeah, gosh you would take all these weird pictures with your friends at like sleepovers like in pajamas and like in the dark <laughs> doing all sorts of weird shit i have all of that in albums that i made when i was like 13 oh <laughs> it's a great time i loved my digital cameras and then from then on like every three years i had to get a new digital camera because they would come out with higher megapixels do you remember being yep. like this one's seven megapixels this one's 12 megapixels yeah. holy shit yeah yeah and Ooh. then we finally graduated to <laughs> to the dslr <laughs> yes in college i got a dslr and it was life-changing yeah i mean mine was too my, that's what started my youtube channel when i got yeah i started on um a canon uh flip hd uh video camera <laughs> oh and i remember those yeah yeah i wanted hd so bad because for my 16th birthday i got a camcorder that like takes a tape <laughs> that's how i started my channels <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> And um, then I got the HD, and that was life-changing, and then the the DSLR. (laughs) I just remembered a new one I had, um, and this makes a lot of sense, but uh, for, I think, around third grade, I wanted a sewing machine uh, for Christmas. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. 
Well, because I tell the story and I always forget it because it, it was so short lived. Like we have these like short lived fandoms because either something breaks or, you know, you just can't make it work. Yeah. When um, you're a kid, it just goes away really fast. Yeah. But like uh, my mom sewed and then my next door neighbor, Susan, was, oh my God, she made us the most beautiful clothes when we were younger. And I was so interested in it. And I would go. Um, my, my mom got me a sewing machine and it wasn't a very good one cause it always broke, uh, or oh. I just didn't know how to work it. Cause I don't think I understood how like the bobbin and all that stuff worked. Um, and then my next door neighbor, uh, her Christmas gift along with my mom was like all this different fabric. And, um, and then my mom kind of like sat me down and like taught me, but she didn't teach me all the things. And then Susan would teach me some stuff. Um, and then I would, I remember I'd go to school with my little notebook and I'd be like, I'm going to make you a shirt. And I was very oh. into making these tops that had like these long sleeves and I would like design them in my notebook. Like bell sleeves? Yes. <laughs> and um, I never made any of those. <laughs> I would make like you little just doll took orders. Yeah, and I, I I like made little doll clothes um and like a pillowcase. I think uh, that was like one of my first projects. And then Ooh. like the machine broke and I didn't oh. know how to fix it. It's so sad. It's like when like an easy bake oven breaks and you're just like, well, never making anything in there. Yeah, again. exactly. I'm like, I'm it, I I could have used my mom's machine, but <laughs> you I don't were know. young and you're like, mine broke. <laughs> um. All right, this was huge and probably huge for a lot of people that were at all alive in from 1996 to 1999, Beanie Babies. So <laughs> yes. I, as a six-year-old, was so into collecting Beanie Babies. I would have, like, my dad bought me this book that had every, like, Beanie Baby of, like, the first two generations and, like, how much each one was worth and how rare they were. And I studied that thing till I became a Beanie Baby encyclopedia. <laughs> like, I knew everything. I was like, this one's worth this one. This one's really rare. Oh my gosh. And like, everyone would come to me in class and be like, what about this one? Like, <laughs> what about this one? Is this one rare? Is this a cool one? And I thought yeah so we were told like at this age that we were gonna like sell them and keep them in like glass boxes i don't know if you had a couple <laughs> glass boxes plastic no, clear boxes I, the thing is, I is like i i like had no regard for for any oh of like the God. collectible stuff like that I, that's why i took my bar box Olivia. I and was i at the ripe age of six and <laughs> very aware i just liked them i thought they were cute <laughs> i was i would memorize Okay, so the thing, like, the thing that really made Beanie Babies take off and feel unique was each one had a tag with a little poem about, like, their life, about, like, the character's name, and they all had a name, and they all had a birthday. I memorized every fucking birthday, <laughs> and, and I knew all the little descriptions. Like, I was obsessed with these things, and I had, like, tag covers for all the best ones so i knew all the rare ones so i'd save the tag covers for those and they were like these little plastic covers so that their little tags wouldn't get ruined they had these little heart tags on them that i had do their remember those and information yeah. in them and i would tell people about each one when i got the beanie baby i was like this one's name is quackers it was born on this day and this day <laughs> like it's this age oh my gosh. um and it likes like whatever it liked in its little description <laughs> but um yeah they were my favorite and then the bears i like would put the bears in my glass jars that i had like it's just so weird for you to do <laughs> let me just protect <laughs> the stuffed animal <laughs> no one touch them <laughs> and then olivia who was like three at the time, had no fucking regard for hers. She had this one dog named Wrinkles that she would take with her everywhere and like press up against her face. And it was disgusting. <laughs> but it was her favorite. It was like covered in snot. You know, and you can feel like hardened snot and shit. Ew, <laughs> like, I guess. It was like this little bulldog <laughs> that was like flat in the middle. And his name was Wrinkles. And I never forget that one. It was her favorite. But, yeah, I have them all still in a big fucking Tupperware. And we would play with them by, like... You have them still? Uh, yeah. I'm not gonna get rid of my Beanie Babies. <laughs> at your I mom's? Don't... Um, yeah, they're at my mom's. And so, 
Oh, you know, I forgot about like, so I never got an allowance and I. Me either. Yeah. And, but when everyone was buying Beanie Babies, I like talked to my parents and I was like, I really need an allowance so I could save up for my Beanie Babies as a six year old. <laughs> and my dad was like, okay, we'll give you $5 a week. And I saved and it felt like forever for my $30 platypus patty Beanie Baby. <laughs> Oh my god! You know those kiosks in the mall? Like one of them had Beanie Babies, and they had the platypus. And I had—I was also in the duck fandom. Like I loved ducks, and I needed Patty the platypus. It was purple. It was a duck, and it was rare. And it was thirty dollars, which felt like three thousand dollars to me. <laughs> and I got it eventually. It was like my pride and joy. It was like I saved up for this. <laughs> Um, a lot of people are relating to you in the chat. <laughs> Nicole says we were all so convinced we could collect them all and sell them for so much money. <laughs> As like babies. <laughs> like who installed this idea into our heads? Was it our uh, parents or was it no, the TV? You know who it was? So it spread throughout the parents because there were these parents in a certain town. I started watching a documentary and there were these parents in this one town that started like collecting them all because they got really into it. And then it became like a race to get every new Beanie Baby. So they started like being rare. You know, they created the supply and demand. And... Um, and T.Y. would only sell them to independent venues. So you couldn't get them at, like, Toys R Us. You could get them at, like, the pharmacy, at, like, random boutiques. Oh, yeah. So you couldn't just get a Beanie Baby. It was, like, a hunt. That's mm -hmm. what also, like, made them so rare because they weren't available everywhere. You had to find, like, little mom and pop shops. And, like, they were at my Barry's, like, town pharmacy, which is so weird thinking back. But, like, that was the place to find a Beanie Baby. <laughs> And I remember going to this bridal shop and like, cause they had beanie babies there. <laughs> like I was like, we have to go there. I need to get this rare beanie baby. We need to find it. Like it was crazy. Um, if anyone doesn't know, they're like these little stuffed animals with beans in them. Like <laughs> that's, what, that's what we were going crazy over. <laughs> they were cute. We had a, they were a crap cute. ton too. But... They're very cute. They like, now <clears throat> TY sells these like things with giant eyeballs. Eyes. And, like, they're giant eyes. I don't know what those are, but they're not Beanie Babies. And every time I see the TY tag on them, I'm like, what is this giant animal with giant eyes? They just re-release Beanie Babies. They really The millennials have children now. Yeah, they're really cute. I would get them for people. Like, honestly, if they had Beanie Babies, I would, like, just add it to people's birthday presents, like, on top. Like, <laughs> one that, like, feels like they would like. Um, Okay. All right, Another doll next? thing that what's I was next? obsessed with. Okay, you, you haven't gotten into this yet, so maybe you can go along with mine. All right. I was obsessed with my twin doll. This was the... Uh, Wait, are you uh, thinking of the American Girl doll twin doll? No, 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 no. What no, is no. it? It was in direct competition of American Girl doll. And I've never heard of it. <laughs> and uh, my mom got me obsessed with it. She saw it and she's like, "Look at this, Natasha!" And it's like a, like, uh, like she would show me pictures in the catalog, and and you could like. You, so what what you would do is you would send a picture of your child to the doll factory, and then they would make a doll that looks just like your child. And I was obsessed with this idea. Okay, and um. My mom had sent, my mom had got me my twin doll for Christmas one year. I thought it was Santa because I was convinced Santa was real until I was mm -hmm. about 13, 12 years old. Again, I was too old <laughs> to believe in these things. Um, <laughs> and, and like my mom like wrote a whole note about how like, Santa got this for you. And then she's like, yeah, Santa called me on the phone. And I'm like, how did Santa get my picture? Like, how did... So I opened the twin doll one Christmas. And it has, like, this very, like, curly hair. Because I'm, I'm assuming my mom sent this picture with my hair and ringlets. And um, I had matching outfits. And I would take her everywhere with me. And then I remember we were, like, trying to straighten her hair for the longest time. Because it would just became this, like, knotted mess. And... Um, that didn't work out. <laughs> Trying to straighten the doll's hair. Yeah, no, I was like, 
I, I was obsessed with her. Like, she literally came. But, like, isn't that so fucking creepy? Like, this doll that looks like you? Well, um, American Girl doll had a similar thing where you can build a doll that looks like you. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I was. Yeah. Here, here's the thing. I was my mother. This is not me. This is my mother instilling that American Girl doll was dumb. Okay, I thought it was like why this, I don't tell me why I don't know. I remember looking at the catalog and looking at all the American Girl dolls and being like, eh, I don't know, they're not as cute as I want them to be. And then my mom was like, Yeah, oh look at my God. twin doll. These oh. are cuter. Well, the great thing about American Girl dolls though was that you were like learning about other cultures through them because they had ones from like all over the world yeah oh i know this now (laughs) and now i'm like what was my mother thinking (laughs) well like going right from that to american girl because that is like one of my prime fandoms growing up i was obsessed with these dolls and this magazine was the highlight of my every month (laughs) when it came in the mail i was like <laughs> and I like bring it downstairs with a pen and like circle the things I liked inside of it. Um, do you remember circling things in magazines? Yes, like... <laughs> I I totally forgot about my, my I had a whole magazine obsession too. Me too. <laughs> I loved magazines. Like, they were the best. I had, like, the Kids National Geo. I had, like, my back. I was, like, obsessed with, like, the animal magazines. I <laughs> know. <laughs> uh, I was obsessed with, like, all of the, um, the like, people, the t- the, too. Yeah. I, yeah. People or, like, any of the teen girl ones, um, like, Seventeen Magazine. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. The Delia's Magazine. The, oh, yes. <laughs> Every magazine was just, like, the best day. Whatever came in the mail, I was like, oh, my God, a magazine. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, we never even touched magazines. But, yeah. Wait, Seventeen was, like, the most scandalous magazine I at, know. Like, age 10. Yes. <laughs> I loved reading the, like, Dear Reader things at the end and, like, finding out what people were like, I know. embarrassed about. <laughs> <laughs> um okay but back to american girl so american girl like they had so much more than just dolls because they had the books about every american girl and mm-hmm. like so and they would take place in different time periods like felicity took place during the like american revolution and uh samantha took place in like 1912 and um i don't remember when kirsten took place but she lived in sweden and josephina lived in mexico so Mm -hmm. i would live i would learn about like all these different places and all these different traditions because they would go specifically into like different cultural holidays and traditions so like we would learn about it and i loved that the only one i didn't like was molly and it was so mean why i didn't like her and it was because like everyone called people with glasses four eyes at the time and i was like ew she has glasses what a little little brat <laughs> us think. sitting here with both of our glasses I on <laughs> but back then there was such a stigma against nerds which yeah. like became cool we talked about like south Carolina making nerds cool but like glasses like were very uncool it was a very were. different perspective on glasses and then so when i needed to get glasses in sixth grade i was like so scared that people were gonna make fun of me i forgot about this (laughs) so i would only put them on to see the board and then like rip them off (laughs) oh wow i forgot about that but um anyway molly had glasses poor molly i think she uh maybe she was like took place during like the women's rights movement or maybe during world war ii maybe world war ii that makes sense 1940s i would um, not know yeah i i was uh, i'm obsessed with knowing the dates of things so <laughs> that's true <laughs> christine's early fandom dates i, I know i memorized all the birthdays of everyone and everything all the stuffed animal birthdays um so okay but did you have a bitty baby that was also in the american girl doll fandom like they were like babies that looked really real i was obsessed with those no 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 i was in my barbie obsession i didn't like baby dolls i can't believe you never went through a stage where you like like mothered a baby i used to put all of my stuffed animals in a stroller i had my bitty baby and i had my grinch and my scooby-doo and i had like a three-person stroller I had a stroller. No, I did have a stroller. I did. And we would like, <laughs> Alex and I would like run around the house, like, like 
doing races with them. <laughs> oh, you had a brother, so it was like a different dynamic. <laughs> Yes. Like Olivia and I would mother our like little stuffed animals and like feed them and shit. Oh and the image of this Grinch, like, <laughs> babying this Grinch stuffed animal. What does this really Grinch look me like right now? <laughs> it was the mm. coolest stuffed animal. So Macy's used to have like a stuffed animal of the year every year, and the Grinch was their stuffed animal, and it was like a big one, you know, like it had it was like it would like fit here, mm-hmm. and it was green. It looked like the Grinch, and it had a heart that glowed. <laughs> okay, Nicole says I, I was obsessed with acting Grinch. like a mother at five years old. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And then because JJ our goes. Moms were like our world. They were, yeah. And but then JJ goes, which considering how now I fear children, it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Considering that, I'm like, I don't know if I want kids at all. And like at that age, I was like, <laughs> here's my stroller with all my animals and my baby. <laughs> Yeah, it was, that's really funny. Olivia, you know, she was, like, totally in the housewife fandom as a child. She was like, I want an iron for Christmas. And she wanted a vacuum. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, but, okay, I keep not getting to my point here. So there's Bitty Babies, but then there was, okay, when you got a little older, there was Amelia's Notebooks. Did you know about Amelia's Notebooks? They were no. also made by the American Girl Doll Company. Okay, they were the fucking coolest, like, I-, I felt like they were, like, so grown up. So it was this girl, Amelia, who was, like, nine, and she used to journal. But, like, in her journal would be, like, all sorts of doodles and, like, I don't know. Like, she would talk shit about people, <laughs> like, like, in her class and, like, um, like, make fun of her sister in these journals. Like, it was, like, a journal, but you would read it. Like, it was, like, you would buy her journals and I was obsessed with them. And my best friend Jenna was obsessed with them. And, like, they, the impact these had on me. I love anything with, like, journal entries in it in books. Like, oh I gosh. love putting journal entries in my books. And I'm realizing that, like, once I wrote Again But Better, I was thinking back. And I was like, wow, I was really obsessed with Amelia's Notebooks with her journaling. And that's what made me want to write in a journal. And, like right in that way and then i read these books the amazing days of abby hayes and they were all journal entries too like i was obsessed with that um like the intimacy of like a journal and like reading the entries and like figuring like out how a person really feels about things in that way hmm. do you did you love journaling like did you have a password journal like i was obsessed with it <laughs> i i i did i did but i i wasn't consistent yeah, I, at that time, had this amazing marble notebook where I, I really want to find it. I, I don't know where it is, but, like, I put so much effort into this journal, and I know I would, like, try to, like, just make up juicy shit so that it would be juicier. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh like, third grade, Christine. <laughs> All yeah, right. I, I definitely had a, like a second grade, like just full breakdown of my crushes at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I would never tell anyone. I don't even know if I told my journals. <laughs> um, okay, so I had a massive obsession with cats. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, same thing with Barbies. My parents had these um, like coffee table books. And one was about cat breeds and then um, and then the other was about Barbies. And so I like knew the entire history of Barbies. And then I know a lot. I'm like Taylor Swift level of cat breed intellect that, that's in my brain. And I would just go through the book and be like, I want this type of cat. I don't like this type of cat. I want this type of cat. And so um, I grew up with a cat. His name was Toby. My parents got him before we were born, but he was very mean to us and like very aloof. Um, And he was a rag doll. And I was like, mom, I want my own cat. And um, so for Christmas, for my, I think it was my first grade year. Yes. First grade year. I got Cosmo. Um, and Aww. Cosmo is, was a, a rag doll cat. And again, me being a, 
uh, six-year-old girl didn't really think about how I got a cat for Santa. Um, <laughs> and, like, uh, like in Cosmo, like, wasn't, like, a cat in a box that I got. I opened up Christmas. Like, my mom was like, Santa got you a cat. We have to go to this person's house and because he's still oh. growing up and he needs to be with his mom. And, um... Uh, yeah, I became a cat mom. Cat lady. <laughs> yes. So I, it was not baby dolls for me. It was my own <laughs> little kitten that <laughs> I took care of. I mean, my mother basically took care of Cosmo for like years. But it um, felt like you were taking care of it because it was yours. Yeah. I did clean the litter box and yeah. like, um, you know, I obviously played with Cosmo when he was my everything. Um, but yeah. I was, uh, yeah, he was the, the thing I talked about the most at school because he was mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, we didn't have any pets like that. Like, we would have hermit crabs. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking stupid shit. <laughs> oh like, that was our most exciting fucking pet was a hermit <laughs> crab. <laughs> And, like, when, whenever, like, they died, and the next time we went to the beach, we'd be like, oh, my God, we're going to get another hermit crab? This is so exciting. <laughs> um, I'll never forget, like, one of them escaped once from Olivia's bedroom, and we were, I was so scared that that hermit crab was going to, like, get In your bed? <laughs> we found it. Yeah, but we found it, like, it had fallen off the balcony and, like, landed behind the couch downstairs. The poor thing. I forgot to mention that Cosmo was a rag doll, and uh, I am forever obsessed with I think rag you dolls. did. Did I? I talked about Toby. Toby was a rag doll. Yeah, you did. You told, yeah, you told us. Yeah, I found, No, okay. you said that he, I think you told, you said the same thing. Well, I would like another cat sometime in my in the future. I have Nico, who's a husky. Um, at some point, though, I did find a ragdoll rescue, so I will hopefully be adopting a ragdoll cat. I don't know when, but when at least I found one, so I, at least I can adopt them instead of you know don't. I'm, I want to adopt, and um, maybe a cat that's not a kitten anymore because that's way too much work. <laughs> Yes. Baby, baby, baby animals are a lot of work. And I think I I had my baby animal and the next time I get an animal, it will not be a baby. (laughs) No babies. (laughs) All right. My next thing here. Okay. Scooby-Doo. This didn't really carry over, but I went through an obsession with Scooby-Doo and everyone ever started giving me Scooby-Doo stuff. It was like the banana of my youth. (laughs) Like, now everyone gives me banana-themed things because I'm full of bananas. And when I was young, like, all throughout my elementary school years, everyone in my family would give me, like, Scooby-Doo shit. Like, Scooby-Doo shirts, Scooby-Doo pencils, Scooby-Doo pencil holder, like, Scooby-Doo notebooks. I was like, I was the Scooby-Doo girl because I loved that cartoon. It was the best. Oh, my gosh. And I wanted a dog so bad. That's probably also a reason why I liked it. Like, it was like I Scooby was my dog because we couldn't have one because my oh. mom was allergic. <laughs> no. I wanted one so bad. And then, of course, I'm just going to skip to the Spice Girls here. The Spice Girls. Oh, yes. I think that was truly, like, my first fandom where, like, I knew people who were also obsessed with it around me. Mm-hmm. But, like, I had the Spice Girl lollipop wrappers like religiously laid out in my drawer i had the spice girl like fucking dolls i didn't touch them out of their boxes <laughs> like i they sold like reels of photos of the spice girls like you know you'd pick up your photos at the store they sold spice girl random pictures of the spice girls <laughs> that i would buy <laughs> with my like it was really really they were the coolest people i'd ever seen and i love their music so much and their first my first cd uh, yeah i do remember my mom playing this part i was obsessed and then also the movie which spice girl were you oh i love ginger you did that's so random <laughs> she's my favorite <laughs> I, you know, because everyone would used to be like, I'm this Spice Girl. And then everyone used to dress up at parties because they used to have a lot of Spice Girl themed birthday parties. (laughs) Like, come as your favorite Spice Girl. Oh, my gosh. 
I was baby spice. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> Obviously. Um, but I I really wanted to be like sporty spice, but I looked more like baby spice, so I took that and ran with it. <laughs> I, I I I liked baby spice, but I and I I never wanted to be like sporty spice. I never wanted to be I never I just I like ginger cuz she was a leader. <laughs> I just like I I didn't feel like she had her thing. So I was like, what does ginger even mean? Cuz like baby spice, she was like with her lollipops and like being like a baby. And then sporty spice was sporty. And then I didn't understand what scary spice meant and I didn't understand what ginger spice meant or posh spice. I was like, what is posh? <laughs> Um, you're too young to like understand why they're being called these names if they're not like very straightforward (laughs) (laughs) um i was eight (laughs) okay so the next big one for me was disneyland so i was an annual pass holder from birth like this is I lived I've lived 20 minutes from Disneyland my entire life, okay? And this was a place that like back in the day, annual passes weren't that expensive. They were like maybe $100. My mom had like <clears throat> the more expensive pass so that she could have parking. It was like $200. And so we all had passes. My entire family, extended family had passes. So like we would go with my cousins. It was like Instead of going to like a regular park, we would go to Disneyland and that was my childhood. And um, like I loved all things Disney, but it was the parks and the resort. That's what like really solidified my love of Disney because we would just go for dinner or we would go and ride a ride and, and watch the fireworks. Like my parents loved the fireworks um, and I my I didn't really I, I loved Ariel growing up and I love Cinderella, but I was obsessed with Tinkerbell and Tinkerbell, like flying over Disneyland. My mom would be like, look, Natasha, it's Tinkerbell. Like she's flying over the castle. And then she would tell me, she would be like, I'm like, wait, is that actually Tinkerbell? And then she wouldn't like sugarcoat it. She'd be like, no, that's someone playing Tinkerbell. Like you could have that job when you get older. Oh my gosh. And so know that when I was little at all, (laughs) I I, weren't like, they were just people. (laughs) They were jobs. Um, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I I think I had a, a, I think I realized like, even though they were pretty girls, like I realized they weren't actually princesses, but they were like girls dressed up and I was still starstruck when I saw them. Um, but I always thought like Tinkerbell was the coolest and I was definitely Tinkerbell one year for Halloween. I was all the princesses. No, I wasn't. Wait, I was Cinderella. I wore a Cinderella (laughs) costume for about a year. I was, Little Mermaid. That was my first costume that I picked with a horrible red wig. I was Sleeping Beauty. Uh-huh. And then I was never Belle or Snow White. But I was. I was <laughs> <Belle> once. <laughs> um, yeah, I was obsessed with I Little was Mermaid. Belle and Jasmine. Belle and Jasmine. Um, yeah, they were huge Halloween costumes back in the day. Like, everyone was a princess. Mm-hmm. And or a power ranger (laughs) power rangers were huge i was in that fandom for a very brief moment i feel like you were what um but yeah i was in the power ranger fandom for a brief moment (laughs) power rangers like were you too i feel like it's you're on a delay so like right now i don't know what's happening um but so Disney has definitely carried into your adult life for sure. Oh, for sure. I think the thing with Disney, it's like, it's so cool. It's like get to work with them all the time. And I remember some of the first, the few times I got to work with them, like it was very exciting for my family because we are such huge, like Disney fans, like Disney parks fans. Um, even though I've never been to Disney world, um, (laughs) that is going to be remedied this year though. Um, but uh, 
so yeah that was very fun (laughs) for I think all of us and my family just so like having access to something that we grew up with and like we adore and like it's just like it's what I want to take like my nieces and nephews to like I want to experience that through their eyes it's my favorite place in the entire world um that's great I'm so glad like you have that still near you so you can still like be there all the time I feel like Disney for me had such a different persona and it's been so cool like in my adult life meeting people who love Disney and see it from such a different perspective Um, because I had like such bad experiences there with my parent that had no patience (laughs) and and now it's just so different because I've been to it with like you and people who love it and it changes your whole perspective on it. Um, so my last two, should we touch on the Sims really quickly? The Sims are yeah. huge. It was the huge. Sims, what was, I always played the Sims just to make the people fall in love and have a baby. <laughs> like, yes. woohoo. Yes, exactly. I was I was like, yes, let's get to this point. And I feel like it just makes so much sense for like who we are right now. <laughs> like, I know. What we love. I just wanted them to get like, like the more they talked, like other options would come up and like flirt and like hit up. Like I feel like ask them out or like there was just like all these like more sexual things would start to pop up. And like that was my goal. Like get to that point. And then you can get them in the hot tub together and they can be woohoo and then have a baby. <laughs> I, I I don't think my parents knew. I, I don't think they knew. But at the same time, I, I don't know. They probably were okay with it. But I remember... I remember I brought my computer because my cousins weren't allowed to play The Sims and I would bring it to their house and then we would all play together and then it was like the goal to get them to get married and have babies Mm -hmm. and they became obsessed with it and I specifically remember this one memory where my uncle was driving us Alex and I back home and my cousins were in the car and I was sitting in the middle seat like playing on my laptop in like our 30 minute car ride journey and like we were like don't wait wait, Uncle Craig slow down we're not done yet (laughs) see like this was always like a solo game for me and I didn't have any like laptop so I was playing on the family computer so I would like close the things sometimes when I was like didn't want anyone looking because our computer was in one of those like chest things that you open the doors and then yeah. it was like you pull out a keyboard and my dad's desk was right behind the computer so whenever he came in like he could see what i was doing on the computer <laughs> so i would like play when no one was in there and like i would close the doors on me so i was like in a little cubby <laughs> when it got so scandalous <laughs> so sketch i know i I feel like it was a i think it was definitely a part of like my sexual awakening as well because i was like whoa (laughs) this is scandalous and i definitely did not want my parents to know yeah nicole says i was like oh they're just kissing under the covers yeah because they could go on in the bed together and like do stuff under the covers (laughs) it was so weird like i remember the first sims was you couldn't make them do woohoo they would just like after talking to each other for long enough like they would just become pregnant i feel like <laughs> in the first version and then have a baby but in the second sims is when you start being able to like flirt and do woohoos and <laughs> the sims yes. 2 and the sims 3 yeah there was, but yeah, I remember some people in fifth grade, like this one girl had a laptop and it was the coolest thing ever because she could play the Sims and no one would ever have to make her get off the computer. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> I, I didn't play the first iteration of the Sims. I played Sims two and then I would get mm-hmm. all the like expansion packs for that. And then it would just yes. slow my computer down so bad. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Do you remember, like, the Hollywood expansion pack? And they could be, oh. like, try to be a star. Yes. And there, and there was a romance expansion pack. I had it. I had that <laughs> one, too. <laughs> oh, my God. The pet expansion pack. I had that, too. Oh, my God. I was, it was so weird because you'd have to change the disc. Yes. Well, I was also obsessed with um, 
like building the houses and this is like later on in sims 2 and i i found out like the hacks to get more money and because all i wanted to do was build homes and make them like different and cool and decorate them so i could have all the money in the world and then i realized when i got on the internet that you could download people like made different um different types of sims uh with different hair and makeup expansion packs that you can just download from the internet yeah the mother load is. <laughs> well in the first sims it was like rosebud and then it was like colon exclamation point colon exclamation point colon exclamation point and the more you did the more money it would come in <laughs> yep but yeah i remember mother load too <laughs> um what a time. I hated making the house. What I would do was make just like the most limited, just like square and just put everything in it. Ew, no. I had the most detailed. This makes a lot of sense. I had the most detailed houses and I would spend days, days like decorating and creating these homes and they were so intricate i'm and i would oh my gosh i was playing it when twilight was popular and i made oh a whole God. fucking forks with all of these different i made bella's house i made the cullen's house i was way past the sims by then <laughs> <laughs> I would, like, be all about the family and the relationships. Like, I would put, like, a shower outside just so there was, like, easier access. <laughs> no! Yeah. I remember there was this magic shower that I bought that, like, would make all their, like, levels go to green so I didn't have to make them, like, pee and yeah. do things so I could just make them more talk and flirt and have <laughs> Same. <laughs> But yeah, the house was such a time suck. I hated it. I was like, I just want to get to the character interactions. Get me past this, please. Um, but yeah, The Sims. Okay, we have to move on there to our last couple here. Yes. Um, books were books in your fandom or no? I mean, no, I wasn't a big reader. Like the only, like no. <laughs> Books were not in my fandom. I was not a. I was not reading until Twilight. Uh, so I was obsessed with reading, but I didn't know what to read. So when I found, I remember my teacher read us Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and I was like, I love this so much. So then I, my I told my parents, and they got me all the Ronald Dahl books. So I was obsessed with those, and then the Amazing Days of Abby Hayes that I was talking about, where she journals about her twin sisters, and. Um, amazing days. Abby was obsessed with calendars, so I became obsessed with calendars. Like she had like thirty calendars on her wall, so I got thirty calendars, and I had them all hung up on my wall, and I would change them every month. And it was the that weirdest sounds... fucking thing. Oh my gosh, that sounds very much like you. <laughs> <laughs> Christine's like, have, like every, every time. Type of calendar. Well, the thing is now it's like I always forget to put social interactions in the, into my calendar, and Christine's like, "Are you actually free this day? Make sure." And I'm like, "Yeah, my calendar says I am." She's like, "I don't believe you." And then I'll remember <laughs> something the day before. I'm like, "Oops, sorry, double booked myself." Yeah, and I'll be like, "This is why I want you to put it in your calendar." And now I just make all the calendar things and invite her <laughs> to them, so it's on her calendar. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I love calendars. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, of course, we ha I have to mention Harry Potter because yes. it was my safe place as a child. And I know, like, now it's tainted because J.K. Rowling has, has said horrible things. And, like, of course, I do not agree with her stance on any of those. Um, but... At the time, obviously, we knew nothing about the author. It was all about the book and the magic mm -hmm. and the escapism. And, like, um, you know, whenever my parents were fighting or anything bad was happening on that front, I would, like, go hide with my Harry Potter book, and I would just imagine that I'm in that world. And it was such a beautiful place to be where you could believe in magic. And, like, I would believe that I'm in this school and imagine, you know – learning about all these different 
avenues of magic and like imagining imagine that you could be in that world and imagining that it was real and you just didn't know about it because you were a muggle was the coolest thing like mm-hmm. i legitimately for a long time like tried to you know i it said i knew it in my mind that like pro- maybe it wasn't real but i like tried to convince myself that it was you know that like i like to believe just like santa like i like to believe that there was a hogwarts and we were just yeah. shrouded in mystery because we were muggles um i mean yeah alex and i were we we even though we didn't read the books we went to the movies like opening weekend we were very excited about where the story was going and it like harry potter was our very favorite thing to look forward to and then once you know the internet started and that we were on the internet like that would be like the first thing i would google was like when is the harry next harry potter movie coming out so it was entrenched into my childhood as well yeah yeah and it's why like when all this came out with jk rowling it was this like weird like identity crisis because now it's not a safe place for so many people because mm-hmm. of the association with Joe. But for me, like, I never knew Joe when I, you know, I never knew any of that. I just knew that, like, this is where I could go to feel safe and loved and, like, hopeful when I was in, like, the worst situations with the family drama. So it, it's such, it's been such a weird sort of transition to, like, how to like like to just think about my relationship with it now you know it's weird because mm-hmm. I, I separated myself from it and now I'm like I I don't want to talk about it because I don't want to trigger anyone but it's, it's also such a big part of like why I love reading and mm-hmm. why I believe in magic and so yeah <laughs> Harry Potter was a big part of my childhood and a lot yeah. of our childhoods mm-hmm um okay my i was obsessed with kira knightley (laughs) oh my god (laughs) she was my first like big i think celebrity obsession and it had everything to do with all of her i i watched every single one of her movies like even like these like the, like bend it like beckham like when she was really young um she was in star wars which was her first role um in episode one and um uh and <laughs> there's this really creepy movie called the hole i think i watched anyways um i was obsessed with her um she was actually my first fan site so i wow. became like a member of like Wait. the kira knightley fan site what? yes <laughs> <laughs> and it all happened after i think i that's this it, it was building for a long time um and i i mean i watched pride and prejudice when it first came out as well i remember my mom going to see the movie and then i, I was like mom why didn't i go see the movie she's like it's date night with your with your dad she's like we'll watch it when it comes on dvd um and uh she's the one who got me into like you know historical period dramas and i she was i always drew her in art class <laughs> It was like seventh grade in middle school, and she was like always a person I would like draw the, her face. I thought she was so beautiful um, <laughs> and so is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it really everything solidified after like Pirates Three, and I was just Wait. devastated. Hold on, wasn't it Natalie Portman in Star Wars, not Keira Knightley? Yes. Okay, you don't know this information then. I, I will tell anything. you as the official Kira Knightley stan. <laughs> um Kira Knightley played uh the Queen uh, Queen Amidala's um decoy. Oh. Um so she was Ooh. the queen when Natalie Portman was the like uh the the lady in waiting. Um they were in you know, like when they went to tattoo together. Mm-hmm. This is so weird. She was only oh like God. 13 years old. Wow. Did not know that. Yeah. I used to get them confused when I was little. I was like, which well, one's Natalie and which one's Kira? That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, but after Pirates 3 and like everything, like I was the their Will and Elizabeth Turner. Mm. I was devastated. <laughs> It's like they're not gonna see each other for ten years. Oh my god, that was so upsetting. But I like still, 
there was a part of me that shipped her with Jack Sparrow because I had a giant crush on him. <laughs> me? Never. I mean, I loved Will, too. But in the second one, I was like, oh, I love Jack Sparrow. <laughs> um, uh, I had something to say here, and I forgot. Oh, I met Kira Knightley once. Did you, Have you met her? No. I met when her you at... Her? I, I went to her play while I was studying abroad in London. She was doing this play with Elizabeth Moss, and they came out of the stage door. I don't think I got her. I didn't stop her to take a picture. I was just like, hi, and she was like, hi, and kept walking. But Elizabeth Aww. Moss took a picture with me. <laughs> oh, that was cool. I forgot about that until you were mentioning it right now. She was doing a Boston accent, and it wasn't her best. <laughs> ah. Yeah, she doesn't do very but good. But I wanted to meet her. Yeah. She doesn't do a good accent. She doesn't do a very good American accent. Mm, I don't think I've heard her do one since then. (laughs) It's been years. Yeah. All right. What's left on your list? (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Bless you. Thank you. Oh, wait, you Um, just said Kira. I just said Kira. I have, like, two more that I can briefly talk about. Okay. I have... um, Two more that I could briefly talk about, too. Should I go first? Mm-hmm. All right. All right. This is a weird thing for fandom, but I was so into being best friends. Like, <laughs> I I was... Do you know... Did you I agree. I agree with this. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Like, I had all the best... I had all the best friend necklaces, and I treasured the fuck out of them. I was like, I'm going to hold this forever. I still have them in my drawer. So I did hold them forever. But, wow. like... My best friend, Jenna, like, we, in third grade, were in the same class, and then that was it forever. And we were obsessed with, like, the best friendness of it all. And, like, sleepovers were just, like, the best thing ever. It was the thing I looked forward to the most in my existence as a, like, as a nine-year-old and up. <laughs> um, and we would make up dances and take all these weird pictures and have friendship bracelets, like, making friendship bracelets was such a huge deal and we had all these like traditions for our best friendship like it was huge i don't know if best friend culture was just huge back then or if people still do all the necklaces and stuff i don't know i don't don't know i mean what's your perspective on this best friend necklaces are are, best friend necklaces are definitely still available but yeah it was like just all of that like um what is it like girly pop sugar pop like um uh all all of that was so popular and they had like a lot of stuff was catering to young girls at that point and um uh we had a lot of like Like sleepover culture i feel like the thing like people sleepovers had like a whole aura around them and i don't feel i maybe we're just out of it because we're older but well, I now like parents well parents way. are more aware now because I think there was a lot of bad stuff that happened in you know when we were growing up like if you just let your kids sleep over at anyone's house you never knew what happened and now there's parents who won't let kids sleep over at their best friend's house anymore because of safety issues um and and all what? of that yeah yeah like, like I have I, I my best friend's parents so well they were like sec- they were like always feeding me dinner and stuff when I was over. It doesn't matter. Like you never know, you know. You never know what goes on behind closed doors, and you know you can't. You're not in control of like what happened. I don't know. Anyways, I know people who won't let their kids sleep over wow. at other people's houses. Hmm. Um, Nicole says we had best friends notebooks too, where you'd fill out all your best friend history and everything. Yes. <laughs> We had those. I had Amelia's notebook had a specific, like, best friends notebook. And, like, on one side, you have your picture. And then on the other side, you have your friend's picture. And it's, like, cut out, like, a hole in every page. So you always see your pictures when you're, like, filling in the stuff. Which is so <laughs> cool. <laughs> I still have it. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jenna's third grade picture in there and my third grade picture. Um, um, do you want me to move on? Yeah, go ahead, do yours. Okay, so hair and makeup was also a huge part oh. of 
of like early fandom for me. This came from my mom. She, my mom used to work um, at like the Chanel and the Clinique counters. Um, uh, she was like the manager of those in LA and one of the um, malls. And so she had an abundance of makeup and she loved makeup and she loved hair. And she was always, my mother was extremely fashionable. Um, so that came from her. And I had a lot of fake like makeup uh, toys that like, you know, they don't have any colors in them, but I remember like, you know, applying them to like this face that I had, <laughs> like the Barbie face. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the, I, I, I asked for makeup too. Like when I was really young, probably like sixth grade, I would get those like makeup, um, sets and, yeah. uh, and I used to think they were the so cool. Those like, yes. sets of makeup. Yes. And my mother would like teach me cause she had a whole vanity place. Um, also these were like, and hair was a huge deal for me as well. Like I learned how to French braid really early on. Um, and I learned that off of YouTube, like in 2008. Um, wow, and I would do all my so cousins. <laughs> yeah. I would do all my cousins hair. Like sailor is, uh, six years younger than me. And she had this like, beautiful blonde hair and I would love to do her hair when we ever slept over <laughs> and um she I always like different hairstyles on her so that's so cool I when I was growing up there was no YouTube yet so <laughs> I didn't have anyone to like I didn't have any like outlet to figure out stuff if no one told me how to do it but I remember my aunt Trisha would always French braid her hair really cool in the summer, and she would try to teach me. I'm just like hair challenged, like I, I have like these random things, and I'm just like I can't get good at it <laughs> because I'm not patient enough because it's not like naturally coming to me at all. <laughs> and like I'll be, I'll learn how to do a braid, and then I will forget it if I don't do it every day. <laughs> Because I have to try so hard to be good at it. <laughs> so Natasha is where I get my cool braids now. Whenever someone's like, oh my god, I love your braid. How did you do it? I'm like, how do you not know by now? <laughs> it's Natasha. <laughs> I'm like, I can't do it. Natasha does it. She's a wizard. I am definitely the friend that does people's hair and makeup for them. <laughs> And I don't love this role, okay? It is not my favorite role. I do not love sharing this part of me. It is for myself, but I will share it for the, with the people that I love. <laughs> we appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I only ask ever for braids. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I don't want to like, trouble you. <laughs> I know. Heather asked me. It was her birthday, so I couldn't say no. She's like, when you come up, can you do my hair and my makeup? I was like... Oh, you did her makeup too? Wow. Yes. Oh, I didn't do all of her makeup. I just did her contour. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this is definitely something that's like traced throughout your, into your adult life. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, my last one here is Survivor, which I almost forgot about, but this is like a real big fan of, and I became a part of it at age 10 and never looked back, and I'm still an enormous fan, and it's always on my, like, top 10 TV list every year. That's wild, isn't it? Like, that is that, wild. That's a prolific love. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> um, did you, you said you watched a couple seasons when you were little, right? Or No survivor like, yeah did you like no. did your family ever... oh never okay mm -mm. a lot of people watch like the first season or something um but we watched as a family the second season because i remember we watched the finale of the first season i was like what is this i have to watch this and then when i was 10 it was like the hopping thing in the classroom every day everybody be like did you see survivor yesterday oh my god they ate a cow's brain like <laughs> It was crazy. Uh, um, yeah. Oh my gosh, Nicole says she loves Survivor and was jealous of a girl at school who had one of the buffs. <laughs> Survivor buffs. <laughs> I wanted a buff so bad, I didn't get one till 2020. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's so many years went by and I never got a buff. Now you have now one. I have three. I am the Survivor 
buff girl. <laughs> no, I'm not. But like three is a lot. Okay, I have one more briefly. I um so the X Files was my first major binge watch. Ooh. My parents used to watch this show religiously every week. And it was on too late, so I couldn't stay up and watch it back in the day. Um, and so I'd always hear like the diddly diddly do 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 do. Like I'd always hear that coming from their room. And I was, I was like, I'm so intrigued. This is like the one thing you won't let me watch. You've let me fucking watch everything, but not the fucking X Files. And so <laughs> when the box set came out, my dad purchased it. And then we literally, it was one summer in 2008. We watched the entire nine seasons all together. Wow. And That's so this, nice you all watched it together. And it was my first deep dive on the internet where <laughs> I was on, it was like the, the first like shipping um like videos that people would put together of like Scully and Mulder and I was so obsessed with them I oh I loved it and uh, now I mean my well, some of my favorite movies and tv shows all have to do with aliens and then usually the romance so mm -hmm. that's what I like and it all stems from x-files <laughs> nice yeah that I think I watched one episode by accident and I was so scared and scarred for <laughs> I was like, no, give me more. I was like, aliens are like my horror story. I was so scared of aliens. Like, I was so scared of E.T. <laughs> oh, I hated E.T. too. You creeped the, me the hell out. I was so afraid like an E.T. was going to appear in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> so scary. <laughs> um, but yeah, those were our first fandoms. We love to hear what yours were. Like, please comment with your first mm -hmm. fandom anywhere on any social. Because <laughs> I find these so nostalgic. And you just forget some. Like, you know, we just, like, remembered some while we were yep. talking. Because you just, they just fade away. And it's so fun to remember them. Because a lot of them are hilarious. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, Sailor Moon, Elizabeth. That's, that was a lot of people's. I never got into Sailor Moon, but... I didn't either. Yeah, people loved it. Um, all right, so now we are going to move in to our Merry Kiss Club of the Week! All right, Natasha. So I put this one together this week. We've got you did. all the Ryans, Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Gosling, <laughs> and Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Why don't people talk about the Ryans more? It's always the Chris's. Um, we talk about the Ryans all the time on Dear Hank and John. They Their extra <laughs> podcast was just called This Week in Ryans for a really long time. <laughs> That, well, Ryan Reynolds made a video um, acknowledging John Green. Well, this they, week. he was on the show, and it was like the best episode. He was on Dear Hank and John, and Dear Hank and John, they never have guests. And there was just one morning where I was like ready to listen to my Dear Hank and John, and it was like with Ryan Reynolds, and I lost my fucking shit because they had this <laughs> running joke about Ryan's for so long, and oh they, they got my favorite Ryan on the podcast. <laughs> And it turns out Ryan Reynolds was a big fan of John's podcast, The Anthropocene Reviewed. And oh. so he had already started following him. And then he followed Hank. And I remember Hank tweeting, like, did Ryan Reynolds just follow me? <laughs> 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 and then, like, he shot his shot and reached out. And Ryan was like, yeah, I'll be on the show. Oh, I love oh. Ryan. I love him. Yeah. I it's a great Reynolds. episode. Of Dear Hank and John, if you want to listen to it. There are Twilight mm. references. Like, it's great. <laughs> All right. So this is hard because I love Ryan Reynolds. I just don't know. When someone is as quick-witted as he is, it is very hard for me to keep up with that person. Like, our friends um, from DuraFest, Alex and Pablo, 
I can get exhausted talking to them because they're so funny. They're so great. I love them to death. But like, I'm just like, I don't know how to keep up with you. I'm like, I'm trying really hard. This is just not like, this is not what I'm strong in. Okay. <laughs> like, I can't always be this sarcastic, funny. Like I'm always taking things so seriously. So for that reason, I don't think I can be married to Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. I think I would be exhausted. <laughs> marrying him i I love him so much (laughs) i know it makes sense for you so i'm gonna marry ryan gosling um because he is also very funny he is Um, very cute and he i just he 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 talks a little slower (laughs) he does talk a little slower and he's also a really great family man like they're so private about their family life um and uh yeah so were you gonna say something? Uh, no, no. So you're you're gonna obviously murder Seacrest. I was like, this is like a very like gimme with the murder. <laughs> like obviously yeah. we're gonna murder Seacrest. Sorry, Seacrest. Bye bye. Never been a huge fan. And then I'm gonna kiss no. Reynolds. I just like was googling to find a third Ryan. I was like, am I missing someone? I feel like there should be more Ryans. Um. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna marry Ryan Reynolds. Obviously. Um, and I am going to kiss Ryan Gosling and murder Seacrest. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, okay. And you're just, you're just doing the opposite. Gosling and kiss Reynolds. Very nice. All right. It's time for chapter chat. If you don't know, we have been rereading Akatar chapter by chapter here and this week we read chapters 16 and 17 and next week we'll be reading chapters 18 and 19 so uh let's jump into it Natasha, walk us through what the hell happened in chapter 16. Was it was it a next chapter chapter? Was it interesting? Was it great? I thought it was interesting, although I was very confused about where how I think 17 was like super short or was it super long? I don't know. 16? <laughs> yeah. I think they were both like 20 minutes. Okay. okay. Um I think I, we were doing the audiobooks. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think 16 was interesting because we learned some things. And um, mm-hmm. so this is after Feyre uh, 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 almost gets, like, eaten by the pukas and talks to the cereal. And now she's getting cleaned up and she's talking with um, Aelin, one of the, um, the servants uh, in the household. And... We learn a few things about the Fae. One, um, that Aelin has two nephews and it's been 50 years, uh, cause she's like, oh, you know, she, Faye asked about family and she tells her like, um, my, my sister and my brother-in-law died 50 years ago and now I am left with two nephews. They don't live here. They live far away. And then we learn about how, um, high Faye's age. So it takes about 75 years to reach adulthood. Well, she said some age faster though. So it like depends. It's weird. <laughs> I know, but was she talking about not high fay? I don't know. I wasn't clear. I feel like it's vague. So that well, and then in well, stone. then she was saying how it's very hard to conceive mm-hmm. um, high fay children, and which we learn this later on, but yeah, that her hard. her sister had conceived two boys within, within five, five years, years which mm-hmm. is extremely rare. Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting learning that. And it was interesting. You have the next note you have is like, if you give a robe to a surreal, they just grovel in front of you. <laughs> I was like, it would be like Dobby giving him a sock. <laughs> I know. Like, I don't understand. So Lucian is that much of a dick that he set her up to die. <laughs> it doesn't seem right. Does he just not know this information? Or is he just being a dum-dum? I think he's being an asshole. Like, he's been this whole book. 
<laughs> and the fact that she doesn't like get mad at him immediately yeah. and say something like, it, like they just like <laughs> nod at each other things? yeah what <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like he was just trying to see like what would happen if she tried to catch him, like see where her abilities lie, and it, like you, she could have easily fucking died. It was cruel. We also learned I they were at dinner, I think, and then Feyre asks a question like, "Well, do fairies lie?" And then they're oh. like, "Yeah, of course fairies lie." And I think in the beginning when we were reading this, we're like, "Oh, we don't we didn't remember." Like, wait fairies can't lie well that's the thing because in cassandra clare's book fairies can't lie they have to be very creative in the way that they lie uh they have to tell the truth like sparingly and Mm -hmm. in riddles and shit but these fairies can lie i was pretty sure they could so it was very weird hearing fayra say that they couldn't it was like Mm -hmm. it's like when bella goes to edward is like can't you do you melt in the sun or do you sleep in a coffin it's like the myth in the world (laughs) yeah and that iron doesn't affect them at all it doesn't no did they say that oh yeah the iron doesn't affect them and that the only thing that can hurt them is ash as favor knows ash tree. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah and we learned that the tamlin glamored her family so that they don't remember that he ever came in there they just know that she's safe and that she's with like a wealthy aunt is what they think yeah and that uh if there's any sign of trouble that they have orders to leave evacuate Evacuate. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and was there anything else in that chapter i don't think so i think that oh wait wait wait, no no. the gallery oh yeah he goes have you seen the gallery and she's like no there's a gallery and he's like yeah it's closed off how would she have seen it I shut down that part of the house. It's so annoying. I, know. I just like the it's, it's so different reading this again. And then the first time I was like, please just like him. <laughs> Fall in love with him. Come on. Except me, I was like so confused the whole time. I was like, why do I ship this? <laughs> <laughs> um so he says that he's going to open up the gallery and get it clean so that she can look at it. And then she he's going to get her paint so she can paint whenever, wherever. Because the house is too clean as it is. Mm-hmm. Even though he just said it was too dirty to look in the gallery. <laughs> like, he's just like contradictions all over the place. God, it's so frustrating. <laughs> um, and then also we learn that in the war because she's under the impression that the humans fought the fae but it was 500 mm-hmm. years ago so she doesn't know that there were fae fighting on the human side that's why there was a war at all and that he is over 500 years old he was a boy a mere boy when the war happened 500 years ago and he says he would have fought on the human side against slavery and against tyranny so hmm. okay so what would you rate it yeah i would give it an interesting as well like there's interesting information but it's just like it's not an exciting chapter no definitely not i I did like that we had a little bit of a a, it was um softer moments with tamlin like yeah i'm we're moving into that yes he's becoming more quote likable yeah question mark (laughs) Minus the, the frustrating. Okay, so then the next chapter, um, Favor goes to sleep and she wakes up. I don't know if you caught this, Christine, but she's she's talking about these dreams that she has and that Feyre dreamed of a pale, faceless woman who is, like, cutting her and torturing her and asking for her name. And I'm like, oh, could this be Amarantha? Like invading her dreams because I, I don't remember if that's one of her powers or or she can oh, do that i thought it was just like a premonition dream i wasn't thinking that like maybe it was magic well yeah because i'm like well if she's asking for her name obviously she wants her name so that she can find her family or you know control torture her, her. Mm-hmm. interesting yeah i didn't think about that um i just was like oh this is like a percy jackson dream where he like dreams about the future <laughs> 
it's foreshadowing. Uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, and chapter 16 basically is just all Tamlin brings in a fairy that's dying and has it, it's had its wings cut off by Aramantha. Ripped off. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought it was like sawed off. Oh, sawed off. Yeah, I think that was it. <laughs> but he's one of the he's one of the not cute fairies and he's nice. So <laughs> I'm glad we got that. <laughs> Yes. And like the the whole thing was uh, she felt bad for him. And then he's at like Tamlin asks, obviously the fairy dies within the chapter. And then she's like walking upstairs, like freezing and her nightgown is soaked with cold blood. And she's walking up with bloody footprints. And Tamlin's like, why were you so nice to him? <laughs> and she's like, I wouldn't want to die alone. And then now she wants to apologize for um the fairy that she killed in the forest yeah what's his name again something something with an a A. i don't yeah yeah (laughs) i want to say like andromeda but that is definitely not his name um but yeah she wants to apologize and she does and he says thanks or okay (laughs) or something (laughs) and that's it and that's the end of the chapter uh so that one i i would write a next chapter for me yeah it's just like her holding the hand of this dead fairy. Not much there. <laughs> um, but yeah, that wraps up our episode today. Um, Natasha, where can they follow us and send us any feedback they have? You can follow us on Instagram at those forking fangirls. Send us an email to those forking fangirls at gmail.com if you have any feedback for us. Um, on Twitter, we're fork fangirls pod. TikTok, we are those forking fangirls. And on YouTube, please subscribe. We are at those forking fan. YouTube.com slash at those forking fangirls. Yeah. Uh, we make we release episodes every Friday. Thank you so much for listening today. We want to let you know that our podcast is edited by Jake Needham and Alex Polis. The music is by Cole Jenkins with vocals by Heather Traska. And I'm Christine. I'm Natasha. And we will see you next week. Goodbye.